All right, welcome to Money Club Mondays, a webinar by the Private Money Club. So today is June 28th. We have a special guest with us, Brent Carlson with Corporate Capital. We're going to get into taxes when it comes to uh, lending money uh, for private lenders. We'll talk a little bit about borrowers, what to expect, you know, and profiting out, you know, how you can incorporate things like an LLC into it. And I'll let Brent kind of do his thing with that. So what we're going to get into today, like I mentioned, is all about taxes. So um, and asset protection, you know, that's a very important thing, too, when it comes to real estate investing. So, Brent, how's it going? Doing good. How are you? Have a good weekend. Yeah, good. Thank you. Um, not sure if, you know, who's um, on and if they know the, you know, familiar with my role with the money school, with your group, um, with everything that you guys have going on. But um, been lucky to be a part of of this organization now from uh, from the beginning, and it's just really nice to be able to to help people, educate them, just answer questions. There's a lot of options you have when it comes to forming LLCs, when it comes to doing your taxes. Um, we provide obviously that service, um, but we, there's also a lot of options out there, and I get that. So one thing that's important for me today is to answer the questions, educate you best I can, and then we'll go from there. Um, feel free to, to ask any questions that you do have, um, and they can be anytime throughout the, the event. Uh, I don't mind. I'm not big on screens and, and you know, drawing boards and things like that. It's more of a, of a conversation, so that's what we'll, what we'll have today. Um, to tell you a little bit about my company, Corporate Capital, we're headquartered in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, we do provide services in all 50 states. Um, from setting up corporations, LLCs, we help with certain partnership agreements, operating agreements. My partners are CPAs and accountants, so we help with the daily bookkeeping, daily accounting. We do quarterly tax prep. We do advanced tax planning to make sure every quarter we're looking at our clients' portfolio to see what the end of the year is going to look like, because there's nothing worse. I mean, it's a good problem to have when you have to cut a big check, but there's nothing worse than when you're not planning for that. So we're big on, on tax planning and just looking at that often um, so you don't have those surprises at the end of the year. Uh, then we also do um, estate planning. So we have attorneys that will do, set up living trusts, asset protection trusts, different vehicles that you can have that are separate from LLCs or corporations that protect uh, the, in, the interest of, of an asset a little bit more than uh, say an LLC would. So We'll cover that today. Uh, we are a, a full service um, company, one-stop shop. Um, so a lot of the questions that you have um, from even other presenters you, you, you may have, and you can always give us a call. We're happy to answer those. Um, but that gives you a little background about our company. And uh, Stephen asked me today to be a presenter to talk about some of those options you have available. So Stephen, do you have anything before I, before I jump into it? No, I, I know. I, I think this is going to be great. I mean, because we get this a lot. You know, we have a lot of our students and, and Brent, you know this from participating in our three days and the wealth webinar Wednesdays and, you know, everything we've been doing over, especially the last year, virtually year, year and a half now, virtually, it's been really good. And, you know, we have a lot of students that are working with you on all different aspects of what you guys do. And what, one of the great things about that is, is, you know, as you know, Brent and and those of you on this call, you know, maybe if you're newer, we talk a lot about like alternative investing. So things like taking back control of your money and controlling your wealth. So, you know, working with like IBC, the infinite banking concept and the money multiplier and self-directed investing through self-directed IRAs, you know, not having an advisor where you're controlling it. And then, you know, all of that combining into the fact of, you know, being able to do these private loans and buying real estate and creating rental portfolios. And so it goes a little beyond just like your typical tax advice, your typical accountant might have knowledge of. So that's why I love Brent is you really do study with us too. And, you know, you understand everything that we kind of talk about that's outside of the norm, right? So it's important to work with somebody, in my opinion, that understands all of that. Yeah. And, and we've been seeing a lot of that lately. And, and we actually help with the taxes at the end of the year too. So we're seeing a lot of success, which is awesome. Not just to be a part of it and help setting up the LLCs or the structures, but actually doing the accounting or taxes at the end of the year and seeing that their investment is paying off. That's what means a lot to me. Cause as an investor myself, you want to make sure that you see that ROI. Um, and, and it's important, you know, 
uh, we've been setting up a lot of LLCs for that purpose. We've been doing a lot for the real estate, for the lending. We've seen quite a bit since you know the beginning of the year with some of the, the, the focus and some of the things that we've been uh, talking about. Um, to talk about corporations and LLCs, I really I, I want to give this quick education because a lot of you out there are, are maybe just getting into it or have a portfolio right now. So you already have a corporation or an LLC in place, hopefully. Um, ho hopefully, regardless of the state that you may have incorporated in, that you at least have an LLC and that you're not doing this all in your personal name. Because when you're doing your personal name, there's a couple things. You're maxing out your debt to income ratio, but more importantly, you're assuming all the liability when it comes to the property, the investments. So when you assume all the liability, at that point, you need to put things in place to make sure that you limit that best you can. So there's different states that you can incorporate in. A lot of people will go online or, or go talk to someone and they'll just set up an LLC where they live. I mean, that's okay. Again, I'd rather see that and have an LLC in place than doing everything in your name. However, a lot of people don't know because, again, there's just not a conversation a lot of people talk about, but you're free to choose any state you wish to incorporate regardless of where you live. So since most business owners and investors are looking for the strongest asset protection possible and the best tax savings, they'll choose Nevada or Wyoming right now for their um, structure. So for our clients, we will evaluate and see what they have going on, where the real estate is. Are they using it for lending? Are they using it for flips? What are they using it for? Is it a day-to-day -day business? And then we'll determine whether or not that Nevada or Wyoming LLC needs to be foreign filed to do business where you live. Now, the reason why this works is Nevada and Wyoming has no tax. There's no state tax. There's no corporate tax. There's no franchise tax. So by setting it up here, you're not paying any more tax anyway. Federal tax is federal tax, correct? So you're paying federal. And at that point now, if your investment or if your business or whatever you're doing is in a state and we determine you need to form file there, in a lot of cases, you'll need to register there because the assets there or um, you, know, you have employees there or payroll there, a lot of times you have to register, but in some cases you don't have to. So if you fall into that category, we'll be able to give you that advice, keep you headquartered in one of those tax-friendly states and you won't pay corporate tax on the entity. However, if you do need to register, in your home state, then we'll register that entity. Now you're going to be a Nevada or Wyoming LLC or corporation foreign file to do business in California. So I don't know how many people from California are on the call, but that's a state that is very tax heavy. Uh, so they have a franchise tax, they have a corporate tax. So your Nevada LLC or Wyoming LLC will still pay taxes in California you'll still pay the franchise tax. It's not gonna make any difference at that point, whether you had a California LLC or a Nevada LLC. But the main difference is now, because again, you're gonna to have to pay the tax if you live in that state. The main difference now though, is you're not going to be held personally responsible or liable in the event of a lawsuit. And even though with real estate, people don't think there's a lot of liability. Someone rides a bike on that property, slips and falls just in that short period of time you have it or if it's a long-term investment now you have to start looking at your exposure and the more wealthy you get we live in a country where it's either winning the lottery or winning a lawsuit to become wealthy there's a lot of people with that mindset so we're big on asset protection as a business owner young business owner with some success i'm big on making sure that my trusts are in place for my family that my assets are protected by separate entities and corporate capital we own our building, so we have a separate LLC for our building that we have for, our, and then we have a different corporation for our business. We have another LLC that we use for another capacity that now we're looking at as a company because we're accountants and CPAs, what is the best way to maximize our taxes at the end of the year with all these moving parts? You're going to have that as well. So you can't just set up one LLC or a corporation and think at the end of the year, you're gonna be in the best position possible. Now, you can be in the best position possible if you're having those consultations and those meetings every quarter um, because your LLC or corporation has the flexibility of being taxed differently, especially an LLC. 
Uh, an LLC can be taxed as a single member LLC, which a lot of you probably have, which will go on your Schedule C. Um, there's not a lot of tax savings necessarily with this with the Schedule C. Um, there's not a, a lot more different write-offs between the sole proprietorship and a single member LLC. But again, now we have the uh, assurance that we're being protected and our liability is separate. You also have the ability to have the LLC tax as an S corporation. And currently my business is an S corporation. So depending on what money you're making, uh, the money going out, coming in, the profit at the end of the year, your S, the S corporation could potentially save you quite a bit of money on the self-employment tax. So uh, when you're a sole proprietorship, you're paying that 15.3% on the money that you're making um, and what you're paying yourself. When you're an S corporation, and let's say you pay yourself $50,000, well, that will go on your regular income tax. You'll pay the Social Security, the FICA, all that. But at the end of the year, let's say you take a distribution of, of, of 50,000 or whatever, as long as you're at that threshold, now you're saving that 15.3% on your taxes. And that's a lot of money when we start hitting a certain dollar amount. So again, depending on what that looks like for you, uh, it might be worth just having a conversation to see what you're making. That is something that we do for our clients. Um, anyone that we do taxes for, even if it's something that we did three months prior, if they have a tax question, they can pick up the phone and give us a call and we're gonna answer that for them. Um, we're gonna spend the time with them. And that's all part of just the relationship and part of the service, but we know that there's value in that because at the end of the year, they're gonna maximize their situation and they're gonna more likely, more than likely be in business a lot longer than if we didn't spend that time. So there's a lot of reasons why we do it on our end, but we know that the corporate structure has a lot of different uh, options and, uh, and tax flexibility. So in order to take advantage of that, you must have that conversation. So uh, again, if you have a company, a, a lot of you probably have a corporation or an LLC. Another thing to keep in mind is you can convert that to a tax-friendly state and you can convert that to a state that protects you. Um, so it's not that you can't use that one anymore, but we may wanna look at converting that to one of those states that gives this protection that makes sure that you're structured properly. So I would really focus on, and, and, and if you have questions, give us a call. If you wanna do some research, just research why uh, Nevada and Wyoming um, businesses are, are flocking there. Uh, we incorporate, we have roughly 13,000 clients that we're a registered agent for, or that we've worked with in some capacity. And more than 12,700 of those are Nevada or Wyoming. So we have some, because they have a professional corporation and they'll have to be in their home state. Um, we'll have others that just want to incorporate there for whatever reason. But again, we really focus on educate our clients on those states for the asset protection. And also because it's not going to affect them tax wise. I'm real big on uh, making sure that, that that education is there for the corporate structuring and that tax flexibility. Like you could talk about it, um, and give different examples of write-offs and different things, but that's not going to really benefit you. What's going to benefit you, the, you know, the, who's on this call is looking at your situation and determining, can I start with one LLC? Um, do I need one LLC for uh, lending? Do I need one for the actual real estate? Does it make sense for me to maybe have a parent um, corporation be the manager of these LLCs, you know, for different tax benefits and consulting fees. So there's a lot of different um, options you have uh, as long as you implement those and you set up the proper structure. Now, these structures give you a lot of different options too. So if you're using your LLCs or setting up an LLC for real estate, you can set up a series LLC in a lot of states and that actually keeps things pretty simple where you're setting up one LLC, you're having it taxed however you want, but you can have multiple businesses underneath that LLC. So I call them series, serieses. So you have series A, B, C. You can have as many series underneath one LLC that you want. So now if you have 10 rental properties in the state like Nevada that's, that's, that acknowledges and accepts a series LLC, you can have those 10 properties separated from each other but now at the end of the year, you're filing one tax return. Now at the end of the year, you're only paying for one renewal with the state to renew that LLC. So again, 
if that's something that we can put you in to simplify it, but just because it's simple doesn't mean you have a ton of assets that you can't protect. Again, there's that flexibility and there's the states that offer that. And for the most part, our clients that we work with um, are in one of those states that, that recognize the, the series LLC. Yeah, that's, um, that's, cool. that's really cool, Brent. I didn't even realize that. The um, Because one of my ch- problems in the past is, you know, a lot of people would always recommend, you know, get an LLC for every house or get an LLC for every whatever. And it just becomes so burdensome, like you said, with the fee, the it's annual true. fees and everything and all the reporting and you got to file every one of them separately through tax. It's just so much. So that, that sounds like an awesome solution. Yeah. So, and again, it just depend on what state you're in, depend on where the assets are at. Um, you know, we, 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 we talked, and I'll talk about it briefly. Steve mentioned earlier, the solo 401k, there's ways that you could take your own money and roll it over, put it into an LLC and have your retirement, your money basically fund your real estate or fund your business for that matter. Um, so what, again, what we do for that process is we'll make sure that the LLC is formed properly. Um, and just to talk about this real brief for those that do have a corporation or an LLC in place, a lot of times when they form it on their own, um, I have noticed that they don't have a corporate record book. Um, here's one of our corporate record books that we have at Corporate Capital. And I got quite a few on the shelf behind me because I help my clients each year with some of their minutes and and some of the, the required documents like for corporations and LLCs. But in this book, we have the operating agreement. We have the membership certificates. We have all of the documents that you need, whether you're a, a single member LLC or a corporation, it's important that you're in compliance. So when you form that corporation or LLC, you should have put together an operating agreement. But a lot of times, like even in Nevada, they incorporate more businesses here than the other state. But the issue is, is they just take records and orders. So they're forming the articles of incorporation for the business or the investor. They're getting the Nevada state business license, but that's all they're providing. So now the client gets an EIN and they open a bank account and they think, okay, that's all I need to do. It's so important that you're in compliance. So we'll put together a corporate record book that will have the operating agreement, which recognizes the statutes of the state, says that you can operate, who's going to run the company. You have to have that. If you don't have that and you get sued or audited, it's going to be a scramble or you could potentially have the corporation set aside because now the corporate veil can't protect you because you weren't being ran like a proper corporation or a proper LLC. So it's important to make sure that you're in compliance. So what I'm getting at is we form the LLC and do it properly, get everything done, the EIN, all these corporate records. And then we use, if it's okay, Steve, to say Horizon, um, yeah. Horizon tr- Trust for um, that. The, the final piece of that, as far as actually getting the money and transferring it to the, the solo 401k LLC that we set up. Um, but we that's an option available for you. That is something that a lot of people don't realize, you know, how, how easy it is to use. Um, so if you have questions about that uh, retirement, uh, give us a call. We can give you a consultation on on how to set one up, what it can do for you, and then ultimately get it uh, funded and operational with Horizon Trust. When should I look into an LLC and what benefit is there going with you versus like a legal Zoom if they're staying small, like just doing some lending out of it? And we'll get into the second part of that question, but you kind of hit on it right there, like a LegalZoom.com or like an on- online type thing, you know, and I've done it in the past myself and it come to find out like you go to file your taxes and you end up realizing you missed a bunch of stuff or it wasn't set up right. And then you deal with a whole nother headache of problems. And that's the biggest thing for me, but I'm sure you have a lot more experience you could talk about on that. Well, I'll be very, very upfront with you. The, the, the fact that that person mentioned that they were going to be small, I think that's where the relationship like with our company is separate from legal zoom. Whether, and, and, and Stephen can tell you, there's a lot of students. Um, I call us all students, whether it's different groups and that I'm a part of, but- yeah, I do that too, yeah. Do you? Yeah. Um, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought when I said students. What, what was the question again? <laughs> He's talking about using, you know, you guys working with small investors. Oh, so with our company, when you set it up, I work with, with, with quite a few of the, of the money school clients. Then I also have Flo and Charlie 
Um, but when you work with corporate capital, the person that signs you up, again, a, a lot of cases it's myself because I'll commit to the, to the consultations, do everything I can to, to provide the value to Steven and to Chris, uh, but you get that person. Um, so if you ever have a question, you're not emailing or doing an online chat. And some of those companies are really sophisticated and advanced that way. And some people prefer that, but I'm still kind of old school, um, even at my age on having the relationship, having someone to talk to. So you'll always be able to pick up the phone. Um, when we set it up, we give the consulting as part of that. Again, there, there's a reason for that because we, we know that there's going to be some things that you're going to need in the future. There's going to be some questions you have to make sure that you're successful. I don't want to have new clients every six months and then spend my wheels for new customers. So we consult with you. Uh, you're able to call us at any time. Um, you'll see that we're pretty accessible seven days a week um, for the most part. And that, I think that's the main difference is it's a, it's a relationship. You have the consulting aspect. You have someone to talk to about your taxes, your next investment. I'm bringing on a partner. What do I do? Uh, I need a city business license. Uh, you would call one person, not have these different divisions. And when it comes down to it, once, like Stephen said, when you get all the proper documentation that you need, like an operating agreement, the membership certificates, the membership certificates are professional, really expensive certificates. Well, you need those if you're the owner to show that, hey, here's the certificate of the company on the owner, if you have partners. Um, so we include all of that. And when it's all said and done, um, especially with, with, uh, with the pricing that we give through the money school and obviously through, through these Monday um, sessions, it, it comes out being a little cheaper than some of those groups. A lot of those companies will advertise that you can incorporate for $99. Well, yeah, that's true because it's $75 for the articles of incorporation in Nevada. But then you have to have the business license, which is 200. You have to have the list of officers, which is 150. So now it's $425 just to the state of Nevada to incorporate, but companies will advertise $99 because technically if you get your articles, then you're incorporated. So there's just a lot of things that, that you need to make sure that are done. Um, so we're just more of a turnkey up front. Here it is. This is what you need. Let's roll. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And, and so here's another question and this is a pretty good one. So, that, you know, this is, we have a lot of private money lenders in here. They're, you know, new to private money lending and just starting to lend out. So, you know, they might be lending, let's say out of their infinite banking policy. So they're pulling the money out. So it's sitting there in, in like a checking account, like cash, right? So it's not qualified funds. It's not a solo K or an IRA or anything. It's just non-qualified money. So in that case, you know, first rule number one, always lend only to an entity, never lend to an individual. But should they be lending from a company like an LLC themselves, or is it okay for them to be just lending on their own? Let's say there's, they just have like $100,000 they're lending out at any given time. Should they be lending that through like from, from their LLC? Should they form one? to lend or should they just lend individually? I would, I, would, I would form it through an LLC. I would still lend through an LLC. I mean, from a tax point of view, it's not really going to matter, but just from, a, from an asset, you know, cause now if you have an entity that's lending a hundred thousand dollars or doing those types of transactions and getting money paid back, now you have an entity that has some transaction history, which is the next thing that I'm gonna go into the business credit. Now you have a company that has these transactions, that has this, um, this uh, you can actually use it now for a separate, if you wanna get loans, if you wanna use it for other purchases, if you wanna use it, but obviously if that person's investing, they probably have a lot of money, so they're not gonna need that LLC for that purpose, but there's just a lot more protection. It's a lot more clean when two LLCs are working together. Um, so I would, I would always recommend anytime I've done something like that, I've always done it through an entity, but again, it's kind of a, it's kind of a personal preference. Um, some people will say it's fine doing it through you individually, but I always try to limit my exposure of what I'm doing as an individual if possible. Yeah. Okay. What, what about, so if, so just as like, kind of like a flow, just so people can get a picture of it, I like to kind of visualize it. So if I had, okay, I have my infinite banking policy, I pull a loan out, right? It's now sitting in my checking account. So I have $100,000 sitting in my checking account right now. That money would then need to get into my LLC so I could then lend it out to the, to the loan, right? Yep. So would I create, how would I get the money from my checking, my personal checking account into my LLC to loan it out? How would that little step work? 
Yeah, so at that point, we would just write um, a check to the LLC. And then we would either write it up, depending on how they were doing it, it whether it's a loan to the LLC, a contribution to the LLC, um, again, depending on, on what they're trying to accomplish. But in this case, it would just be a loan. So then you can have a promissory note uh, where the individual is going to be paid back. Um, but it's, it's, it's very, very simple. There's just one document that we have to do as far as uh, from a compliance standpoint. And then we're just writing, just how we put the money to the individual, we're just writing it from the individual from their personal account to the LLC. Then the LLC would have the contract and you know everything would be between the LLCs. But that would be my recommendation. Again, depending on the amount and where they live, I may recommend doing it as an individual, but that's not very often. So maybe with that individual, it'd be good to have them just shoot an email if they don't wanna talk on the phone or, or give us a call. Yeah, no, that's that's great. And I put your, um, the corporate capital, um, what is it? Are you using the same phone number? slash ask for slash the money school in the in the comments over there. Is that still good to schedule calls? Yeah, the 855. I, I didn't put that up. What is the number? I'll put it in the chat box. So it's 855-410-7667. Okay. 855-410-7667. And then what's a good email to reach you guys? Yeah, I was just going to give you that. Use the one that will um, come to me, Flo and Charlie. So info, I-N-F-O, mm -hmm. at corpcapinc.com. So info at C-O-R-P-C-A-P-I-N-C. Yep, that's it. All right, so I'll put all three of those options on there. So, And that's, yeah. that's one of the things, like it's... um. You know, we, we get a lot of questions about taxes and LLCs and the right and wrong ways. And honestly, like, it's one of those things where I'm so glad we have you because when we start talking that, like my eyes glass over, I just, and I, I work with you myself with all this stuff. And, you know, I, I, you almost have to, I think you guys call me more than I call you. Cause I just, I always push it to the side. Like it's my least favorite thing to, to deal with. So I love having you guys. So I just, if anybody's like that too, like I just love having one go-to person that can just handle everything. Hey, I gotta be honest. I'm a very transparent person. I think you gotta be real when you're working with people, talking to people. My partners are absolute saviors to my business. I am very good at, at you know, business development. I'm very good at these relationships. I know how to grow a company. They know the ins and outs when it comes to taxes, when it comes to, the, the PPP loans, when it comes to everything that we need to do and take advantage of, that's where they come into play. And I'm the same way, Stephen. If I didn't have them as a business owner and I had just a certain section of my business, I, I don't know what category I would fall into. I would need to make sure that I have good team um, you know, in place because you're all ultimately just as good as them. And, but I can't talk good enough about Josh and Nate. They're my partners here at Corporate Capital. They're, one's a CPA, one's our accountant. Just very good at that, very organized, um, kind of keep me on the straight and narrow. Matter of fact, if I did have a share screen, which I don't want to do because I don't have anything prepared, but tomorrow at 9 a.m. is one of my meetings for the second quarter to sit down that Josh sent to me that every quarter I sent out. So 9 o'clock tomorrow, I'm looking at where we're projecting, what our numbers are looking like. We're an S corporation. So now at the end of the year, I'm going to get a K-1. So... A K-1 is something that you're going to get that goes on your taxes. So it's going to go on a Schedule A or a Schedule C, different schedules. But your K-1 now tells the IRS, okay, um, let's corporate capital at the end of the year had, uh, let's just use an even number, $100,000 profit. So now I'm going to get a K-1 and I'm going to now have $33,333 of more income that's going on my personal taxes. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm getting a check from my company for $33,333. That just means that I need to pay my, my taxes on that because the company had a profit at the end of the year. The same thing works for a loss. And that's why sometimes having multiple companies, depending on if you can, if it makes sense, will work because now you could potentially have a K-1 where you have a, a loss or a huge loss at the end of the year, which offsets your income. But regardless of what that K-1 is going to look like, you need to be prepared for it. So Tomorrow at 9 a.m., I'm having that meeting, and if it wasn't for them kind of pushing me and having that, at the end of the year, I could potentially be writing that big check. So it's just really good to have kind of those checks and balances. I think it's always good to, like with a partnership, uh, you know, sometimes in, in life or in business, 
um, you complement each other and find that right complementary piece. Um, and I think that's where, you know, the money school and, and the relationship with Stephen and, and what we've been able to provide for some of their customers, because this is new to a lot of people. They're investing a lot of money. Um, you know, they want that reward, but at the same time, they're scared of the risk. So I wouldn't want them to understand all the different possibilities and options they have. Um, I do want to talk quickly because I know we only have about 20 more minutes, but the business credit, I want to mention this quickly. Someone asked about setting up an LLC and when should I do it? I'm a big believer, and they even teach us at the Harvard School of Law, set up um, a business, sorry, set up a corporation or LLC before you make your first dollar or before you do your first investment or contract. So an LLC, if you're, if you're going to use it for business, if you're going to use it for anything that you've learned thus far, I would set it up because now you can use the LLC or corporation to your benefit. You're going to have an EIN for this business. You're going to have a bank account. So now you have a, a, a separate entity from yourself. It's an entity that you control. It's something that you benefit from, um, but it's separate. So now, depending on how dressed up that entity is or how good it looks, now if you're looking for lending, if you're looking for a loan, if you're looking to lease a vehicle, purchase a vehicle, your LLC can do things like that for you. So we have a program here um, and it's not that complicated. It's a business credit program where we will put you through a process that takes about 90 to 120 days and you're able to build credit on the entity. And so that LLC now in the future, you can use it to lease a vehicle. I've done it with my, my wife's uh, truck. Um, you can get credit cards. You can do things now in the name of the business that you don't always have to personally guarantee or use your own funds. So you're going to give yourself another option at the same time, make sure that everything you do, whether it's big or small, that liability is separate. And again, I'm, I'm real, real big on that. Um, quick story with, with, with the business credit. When I started my company, um, I built the credit, got a $40,000 loan out of New York. Um, we paid 20% on it. At, um, but again, I didn't sign a personal guarantee because I was able to um, dress my company up, get the loan. Our first year, we did over seven figures. Um, it was something that, that made sense. Like, I'm going to borrow this 40 because I know the potential of where we're going to go. I knew it was a higher interest, but at the same time, my, my entity had good enough credit that it was able to sign a performance guarantee and not a personal guarantee. So if I didn't make it, which I was confident I was, if I didn't make it, then I did not have to worry about paying a penny of that $40,000 back. So that's another thing um, and benefit that, the, that a corporation or LLC can offer you, not only the tax benefits and the asset protection, but also um, having um, something to uh, give you another option for funds as well. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. I know business credit, I feel like it was always really complicated in the past, but it sounds like you've gotten down to a, a science. Yeah, it's, you know, a lot of people or businesses will come to us and the, it, it, it's really frustrating. It, 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 it's kind of dumb, to be honest. You can be in business for 10, 15 years, have no negative payments, um, have no positive payments and have no, or sorry, have no negative payments, but you have no credit history. Because in business credit and for a corporation or an entity, usually they will only report if you're not paying them. Unlike in personal credit, you get everything reported. Well, in business credit, the vendors, they don't care if you're paying them on time. But if you're not paying them on time, then they're going to make your life live in heck. They're going to send it to the bureaus. They're going to report it. And it's going to give you a ding and a red flag of being able to get funded. So with business credit, yeah, there's only a handful, like a couple hundred vendors that actually will allow you to get a line of credit um, with a new company or even an existing business with no personal guarantee. And in order to build the credit, that's how you have to do it. So there's a process, uh, you make a few purchases for a few months, um, you're able to get the paydex score. We actually guarantee um, all of our clients an 80 paydex score, which is like an 800 FICO score. Um, and we're able to do that within a 90 to 20 day period. And that will open up some doors, um, give you some options. Again, at the same time, not to over um, value business credit because there's tremendous value to it, but, the, the lenders and, and they're also going to look at the entity and the ability to get paid back. So I don't want people to ever think that if I build credit, I'm going to get a half a million dollar loan. 
that's not the case. And, and we're not the right company for that type of relationship, but we're, we're the right company to help build the credit to make sure that now as you start growing each year, year after year, that you're starting to limit uh, eliminate your personal guarantee like I did after the, the third year is when I was completely able to eliminate the personal guarantee on a significant truck payment for my wife and kids. The first time around, I wasn't able to do it, even though I had good business credit enough to get the $40,000 loan. So again, you're not in control of that, but you can put yourself in a position that if, you, if they're going to say yes to anyone with no personal guarantee or give a loan, have business credit, pay your bills on time, and it can do a lot of a ton of advantages for you, for yourself. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, all right, cool. So I have a few questions coming in. You want to kind of rattle a couple off real quick? Yeah, and then after that, we'll go into the, um, the Asset Protection Trust, Living Trust, and then we'll be done. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, so, yeah, and somebody actually asked about a trust, so maybe we can get into it here, but thoughts on using a trust versus the LLC, using a trust in option when lending? Yeah, Absolutely. The um, trust is an option for everything that you do. The only thing with a trust, depending on if it's you know revocable, irrevocable, is the taxes. Um, like an asset protection trust is an unbelievable trust. It's one that I have, um, but it, it's going to pay a little bit higher tax than, um, say, an LLC that, that flows to a, an individual. But at the same time, um, the asset protection trust, and, and let's just talk about that real quick. So an asset protection trust is a trust that's um, unique to a few states. We set all of ours up for our clients in Nevada, but an asset protection trust is a trust that after two years, whatever was transferred into that trust is protected from any type of creditor, any litigation, anything whatsoever. The reason they make you wait two years is because they do not want any type of fraudulent transfers. Um, I had a client in Florida, ran a stop sign, hit someone on their bike, contacted me, want to set up all the, the structure and trusts. At that point, there's nothing you can do. But if you're proactive and you set up uh, the irrevocable asset protection trust, then after two years, what's ever in there? So the money in the bank account, you know, the assets that are actually into the trust. Now it's irrevocable, but it has revocable privileges. So you're able to have some flexibility of taking things in and out of this trust as well, which is very, very unique. And again, a lot of states do not offer it. So again, I would always want things ran through a trust if possible, but you have to understand and have that consultation of the differences in the taxes if you choose to do that. Um, but the asset protection trust, what we do for a lot of our clients, and what I've done is the shares that you have in your LLC. So not only the assets that you have in your name, um, you know, vehicles, art, guns, anything you want, you can put in the asset protection trust. You can also have the membership certificates or stock certificates of your company issued to your trust. So now if anyone were to ever sue you, um, you own nothing in your name. You don't own the membership interest of your LLC. You don't own the stock of your company. You don't own your vehicles. It's all owned by this asset protection trust or your business, which is owned by the Asset Protection Trust. Now, again, after two years, what's ever in there, I don't care if you owe someone a million dollars. If you get sued, you owe a creditor, they cannot come after the assets that are in that trust. The statutes do not allow it. Again, that's why they make you wait two years so there's nothing that's being fraudulently transferred. You're just being proactive to protect your estate. Now, what we do at that point, and our attorneys do these trusts at Corporate Capital, so the beneficiary of the asset protection trust is the revocable living trust. So the revocable living trust is the trust that you can make changes to at any time because the, the asset protection trust, you can't change the grantor or the beneficiary. So we make, we have the, the beneficiary be your revocable living trust, which you can change at any time. So if you're like, I've had clients over the years that let's say one, one, um, my client in Arizona, he has grandchildren, he has regular children. He just made a change last month because there's a couple grandkids that, that did something to him that he's not keeping them in the will anymore. There's too many challenges. There's, there's theft, there's things that unfortunately, even though it's a family, they're not going to stay in the living trust. My point is, is that living trust gives you flexibility. 
So you, so you would want to have both. You want to have an asset protection trust to protect your assets. You put, keep money in that bank account. If you lend out of it, even if you don't lend out of it, put whatever money you want. And then after that two year period, it's protected. Once you pass away as the grantor or something happens, every asset, everything that's in that trust will go to the revocable living trust. And then it will go to your children, grandchildren, charities, wherever you want it to go. Whether or not you have businesses or not, I would always recommend both of those trusts as well to protect whatever assets you have. Because once those trusts are formed, there's no annual renewal fees, at least with our company, there's not. So there's no annual renewal fee for the revocable living trust um, or with the state for the asset protection trust. So once you have it formed, then it's there, you can use it, you can transfer things in and out. Unlike a corporation or an LLC, you have to renew each year. Um, so again, having that conversation to determine what's best, but, but more than likely nine times out of 10, our clients will have at least one LLC, an asset protection trust, and then a living trust. Um, but again, what's unique about our company is we offer all those services uh, here at Corporate Capital. Um, so you're a call away from how do I set up my corporation or, or, or I'm investing or I have a tax question, um, your trust, the attorney. So it, it, one stop shop, which provides a little value and consistency. Um, but um, that's the that asset protection strategy we have. Now, Stephen mentioned a, a couple of times you know, back in the day, things have changed. We've been both in this industry, both been both doing things like this for a while. And things used to change where you'd have to have all these complicated uh, family limited partnerships and triple LPs and all this stuff. And uh, honestly, I thought a lot of it was overkill back then. Um, and it turned out to be the case. And they've simplified things where, you know, we can protect ourselves. So again, whether you have one home or, or two rental properties or you're worth 10 million, you're able to all take advantage of the same things. Um, I, I've seen too many times in my career, started in this in 2005, where people didn't have a revocable living trust, and everything that they have gets tied up in probate, whether there's a surviving spouse or not. If, if, if something happens to you, and your name's on, on the title, and no one else, it's, it goes through probate in a lot of cases. Obviously, if something happens to the husband and wife together, all that stuff, the money, everything, the assets, it goes through probate. So now creditors can come put a lien on it, say, oh, they owed me a, a nephew out of the word works or not a nephew or an old friend can say, you know what, verbally, they told me they want to leave me $10 million or a home. Now, more than likely, they don't get anything, but it goes through probate court. Who pays for probate court? You to defend this yourselves, but it's not you. It's the person now that's trying to make sure the estate's properly distributed, um, you know, the trustee at that point. But it's important to have those documents in place because if you do, all you do is you bring them to the appropriate party, whether it's the bank or a title company and say, listen, here's the death certificate, here's the trust, here's the wishes, wishes and it just gets a very natural, seamless um, transfer. If we don't have it, now, again, we're getting tied up in probate court, which costs thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, and so that's why the living trust, I think everyone should have a living trust, even if they have you know, a, a TV or, or, or unless there's really, really no value and something that they don't care about goes to a specific person. I'm really, really big on, on having a revocable living trust. But I do want to make sure that everyone understands that a revocable living trust does not protect any of your assets. A revocable trust means the assets can be taken out. So anything that is in a side of a revocable living trust and you get sued, then it can be taken out and forced out by a judge and you, and you lose it. That's why the Asset Protection Trust has the assets and owns the businesses and the beneficiary of the Asset Protection Trust is the revocable living trust that has all the, all the assignments of where the assets go. Can't hear you. Yeah, that, that, I was just saying that makes a lot of sense for sure. Yeah, no, it's, it's super powerful. Um, we've been doing a lot of those, a lot of the students, um, just because... And, and, and a lot of people will think that they don't have enough right now. Again, for a living trust, I think if you have anything of value, it's important. And then for the asset protection trust, now you have that date started and it's there. So as soon as you get that asset or as soon as you start that business, you transfer it in that day and have that clock start ticking. Yeah. Sorry. Well, somebody wrote, if you are lending to several entities at once, can you use the same LLC lending entity or is it really best to have one per lendee? but maybe combining maybe the asset protection trust into there somehow. Yeah, they only need the one entity to lend if, if they're gonna be lending to multiple 
LLCs. Yeah, well, they're one entity can lend to a bunch of different people. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah, no, I would. That would be for personally fine with that structure. And just like I did for, turned out to be a great customer. Um, he, we did the same thing where we have one LLC that we're using for lending, and then the different LLCs for the actual investments. Yeah. No, that's perfect. And then somebody said they got denied for a business checking account because they described their private lending as their business. Should they rather describe it as real estate investing? Yeah, I would just, uh, banks are goofy these days. And that's another thing with our company. We have a lot of relationships um, with like Chase, Bank of America, um, and then some banks here in Nevada, like Bank of Nevada, Nevada State Bank. But we have found that every year, every day, they seem like they're making changes um, to the banking system. So, um, very, very, that's very, very frustrating, but that's not uncommon. So with, with, with us, what I'd like to do is, is if you are working with one of those banks, I can give an introduction to, um, some pretty high up people with like a chase or a bank of America to try to help. But yeah, they're, they're constantly making changes at the bank. Yeah. I will say that when you started my latest LLC last year, I just took the corporate book, that blue thing that you showed a second ago. I have it back here, but I just took that to the bank, handed it to them, and they pretty much had everything they needed. So yeah, was- you know, and, and I want to say private lending. It, it, it's which which surprises me because I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I would just say, yeah, real estate investing. Just keep it vague, kind of like when I apply for an EIN, I'll put any legal business. Um, you know, even though it might be for real estate or trucking, because you're allowed to put any legal business to, to keep it vague and do whatever you want with that. So um, that, yeah, that I would just, I would just say real estate from moving forward. All right. Perfect. Um, and then one more here. If I give my money to Steven to buy real estate for me or give it to my neighbor to buy a business where the business pays me back, I would need an LLC, correct? Well, that's kind of what we were, what we were asking, what we talked about earlier. Are they lending it to them as an individual or an LLC? So right. if they lend it to them as an individual, then they would just get it paid back to their, you know, to them as an individual. If they did it through their LLC, then it would be paid back to their LLC. I think it's kind of a similar question than what we had earlier, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Thomas, I mean, it's, um, you know, again, that's what the consultation, you guys do a free consultation, right, Brent? Oh yeah, no, we know your call. Yeah. So just talk about your situation. If it makes sense and they can help you, they will. If not, then they'll guide you in a different direction. Yeah. Like I know, and I know today that I know Charlie and Flo um, are both available. Um, Actually, Charlie was emailing me this morning. So I filled him in and let him know that we had this event. So if you have questions, shoot this an email or call that number um, and we can talk to you. I'm actually leaving for vacation this Friday. I'll be gone for about 10 days. Um, but I'll be back around July 13th. So this week's a little tight for me as far as the calls and consultations, but Flo Turnus and Charlie Fitzgerald, you guys will be super taken care of. You feel no pressure. Um, We're really big on the relationships and consultation. And I think you'll find that we'll answer whatever questions you have and we can leave it at that. Um, But at least you can get those Q and A out of the way and and get the answers to your questions. Yeah. Do do you have a set cost for the um, helping to build the business credit or so it just depends on what they have, what they have done. Um, but, uh, but I, I think they'll find that the right now with what we've done with that program, it's, it's, it's not very expensive. So, I and mean, again, I just don't, I, I hate to do that. Cause if, the, if there's some steps that have been taken already on the client's end, we might be able to go a little bit lower. So, um, but that, that could be, if that, that could be a quick call. If they want to call and just ask that question, then they can get that answer specifically and just kind of give them a little bit of information about their business, how long they've been in business. Then we give them a quick quote. Okay. That's the same phone number and everything. Yeah. The 855-410-7667. Got it. Perfect. And let's see if somebody has an existing U S bank account for BMO Harris, can they use that account with an LLC or other corporate entity? So is the bank account in their name? I assume they mean they already have it in their name. They'd have to open a separate account, right? Correct. Yeah, because because once we open up the business, it's going to have an EIN. So it's going to be like they're going to still be on there as a signer and their social security is still going to be linked, but it's going to be under, let's say, corporate capital EIN 86 dash blah, 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 then Brent Carlson and my social. So they would need a new uh, bank account. Okay. A range for cost of asset protection trust. Again, I know there's more that goes into that. Yeah, those, um, 
so depending on again how many assets and what they're doing we could say between three and, and six thousand okay and then and last I, question and then we're gonna have to thing i do want to say about that though is a, a lot of people have different philosophies we, we believe in writing that off and having that as an expense because you're writing it off for the business and protecting the assets so everything that you do with corporate capital is a hundred percent tax deductible too yeah yeah, that's super helpful. All right, last question, and then we're going to wrap things up here. Um, what's the difference between giving property like a house after death under a simple will or giving it away as an LLC after death? Well, with a will, a will goes through probate. And a lot of people don't know this. So when when like an attorney will advertise, set up a will for $99 or $499, it's not because attorneys don't like to make money um, because they can't make money off of $99 with their time. But with a will, you have to go through probate court. So that's why we will set up a living trust that has the will inside of it. Um, because if it's just a will, then they're going to have to go through the headache of probate and a will has to go through probate court. A living trust does not. So, and then the, what was the question about the LLC? Uh, I think they're just saying, I guess if they were giving away a house that was in the name of an LLC, I guess if the LLC owner passes, they would have to have they would have to have language and in in like a very advanced partnership or some type of agreement that's that states that 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 it's going to that person and even at that point in time um, you, you, there still may be some probate um, if it's not inside of a trust. Yeah, you definitely need to get a trust. Tom, 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 you've had some great questions. You should. Yeah, I like his questions. Set up a call. Yeah, definitely set up a call with Brent. But that's something that we've done in the last few, few years, well, it's been a little longer now, but a few years was set all that up within the trust and the property and everything and all the consultations and everything I've done, you know, everything you're saying right now is, I mean, I wish, you know, it's, it's stuff that's so important. I mean, we live in such a Sue happy society and litigious society. And like you said, everybody wants to be a millionaire from winning the lotto or from, or from a lawsuit. And so you got to protect yourself in every way possible and save what you can along the way. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing what you do. And I won't say the name, but I'll, but high back, I just saw a high from one of my clients. So she was on today. Okay. <laughs> well, Brent, thank you very much. I appreciate your relationship, both through me professionally, through Money School and the Private Money Club and everything you do with us, our students, our members, and everybody. So thank you so much, sir. You. you have a happy 4th of July weekend. And thanks for everybody being here. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks, Stephen. Bye, guys. Cheers.